You're listening to Planet Vero Radio. I am Cindy Schwartz, and this is the Patient Partner Show. We are broadcast on 101.7 FM Real Radio WCZR, and we are podcast on Spreaker, distributed on its platforms. My co-host Jeannie Roll is with me today from Indiana. We're talking about my choice of a subject matter. We're talking about concierge health care and what that means uh, I did some research on it. I've talked with some concierge doctors in the last six months to a year or whatever, different doctors, and also their staff. And I was pretty impressed by the care, because that's what we talk about a lot on this show, the care that they are offering people. I know when you hear the word concierge, it always, to me, connotates like a high-end hotel where you've got actually people that are, you know, running interference for you and doing different things for you, as opposed to, say, going to a motel or that kind of, that kind of um, nighttime arrangement or whatever. And the same is probably true. People think about that in the healthcare industry, but... It also means other things, too. Maybe it's just the word that they chose to use sometimes for it, because it is known by other things as well. And we're talking about doctors where you actually pay maybe a monthly sum, you sign a contract, and then that doctor is yours 24-7. Those doctors don't have as many patients. Probably from ones I've talked to, one doctor here in town has 250 patients. Depends on what their specialty or whatever that's uh, specific. That one's a GP doctor, primary care doctor. But, you know, that goes by whatever the doctor chooses to do. But it also means that you get your care for not your five-minute appointment or your four-minute appointment, but it's actually a 30-minute appointment. And that harkens back to my time frame when the original GP doctor that I had here in town was an extremely phenomenal diagnostician because he spent so much time with you and he knew you. He actually treated our whole family and then he wound up retiring and, you know, it's another story or whatever that for another day. But the care that he gave was unbelievable and a lot of the equipment he had in his office as well. And that's what some of these doctors are doing that I've been talking with. So I want to talk about that today, Jeannie Roller. Um, I know it just brings another aspect to this argument of the hospital care, too, because we talk about that. It's not always the doctors that we have the problems with. It's the hospital care. But I just wonder if having a concierge primary care doctor or cardiologist or whatever would bring another accountability to where you go for you if you need specialized care. So the doctor practices at that hospital or doesn't practice at that hospital. If if the doctor doesn't, he or she doesn't, then you'd probably be in the hands of one of the uh, facilities hospitalists. But will that mean, though, that there is some amount of accountability because you are going to go back to your primary care doctor, your concierge doctor. So I wonder about that. The other thing that I was talking with them about is the staff seems to stay longer and is happier, more positive of an environment. And so that's one thing that we run into a lot, a lot, a lot. It's not necessarily the doctors. It's the staffs that are overworked, undereducated in in, in a lot of instances, Not there for that length of time. I mean, a lot of people, you go to a doctor and then you go to another appointment in three months. Two or three of the staff members have changed. They're different staff members. So, Jeannie Rode will go ahead and talk about it, and then I've got a couple more points I want to bring up. Well, one uh, positive point I read is that the wait time to get into those doctors is shorter. You usually get in within the day, Mm -hmm. which is a plus because when you're sick, you have a cold or something, you can't wait a week or two to see the doctor. You need to see the doctor then. So that's a positive. Mm -hmm. Um, As as you said, Cindy, that they, with them having 30 minutes and having fewer patients, they're more likely to to know you personally Mm -hmm. and therefore get greater service. I think. Well, the quality of care, I think, if you spend 30 minutes with someone as opposed to five or 10 minutes, which really are the what is what I've seen for the doctors, my own personal experience in the last couple of years, and you get to know the person better. And it's, I think, personally, it would perpetuate more preventative care things where you'd catch something, spending that much time with something, say a heart 
problem or, you know, cholesterol problem or something like that, where if you're there for five, ten minutes, it's tough to fight. I mean, for the doctor to even figure that out. The um, right. a lot of times these things come about when we talk about the health care that it needs change and it needs updating and then it needs to be held accountable. You know, we'll have other people on here that just heinous things have happened to them or hear their stories. But maybe this is a way that people haven't thought about that could bring in better care because just a, for instance, Years ago, and not that long ago, there were always, always, we heard about the um, beef cattle feed pens. If you wanted to, you know, that's where your beef was raised in feed pens because it was cheaper. Get the beef to everyone. And then Mm -hmm. more and more people looked into it and saw the abuse and blah, 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 blah. And now we have more, I don't want to say designer for lack of a better word, but um, beef aspects. So it was, for a lot of points, challenged and changed and that's what i'm hoping for with the health care system there's no one quick fix all everything and there's not everyone that can afford this kind of care but some of the doctors really aren't that pricey and i know of two particular doctors in my town that will work with the patients will help you follow the uh, follow file the insurance and do have aspects of testing centers where they have agreements with and the prices aren't as, you know, they're not what's quoted on a lot of insurances. Because there's always the cash pay aspect. We all know that. You know that insurance bill you get, you know, it's not really $55 for an aspirin, you know. So that's all inflated. That stuff's inflated and whatever. But So what do you think about any of that, Jeannie? Well, you know, in theory, I, th- I think it is a good idea I'm not sure, you know, how much it will expand because your average family practice doctor probably has a patient list of two to 3,000 and, you know, they would be going down to four to 600 patients, maybe less. So the membership fee would be prohibitive to most people such as myself because... I'm not sure, even sure what a membership fee would look like, but for a doctor to make the same amount of money with less patients, it's going to have to be a high membership fee. Okay, so I'll give you a quote that I have right here on the paper, because I originally thought that too, Jeannie, until I started talking with doctors personally and and literally asking them how much they're charging. So it says, how much does uh, concierge medicine cost? Depending on where you live and the practice you join, membership fees and monthly costs can raise from, uh, range from twelve hundred to ten thousand dollars a year. I heard the ten thousand dollar price tag by one doctor here in the town where I live. For instance, at this one healthcare place, patients pay a one-time sixty-dollar initiation fee and monthly membership fees ranging from thirty dollars to one hundred and twenty-five dollars, depending on their age. Mm-hmm. So certainly affordable. Certainly affordable. The group also offers family memberships, and those monthly fees are calculated by age, but also limited to two hundred dollars a month. So that's what I'm. I'm kind of coming full circle where I said in the earlier in the broadcast that you know when it first came about five six. I remember five six years seven years ago. You know it was like the ten thousand mm-hmm. dollar price tag. Who's going to do that? Now these are getting more affordable because the doctors are finding um, they just like it better, that the quality of care is better, their quality of life is so much better, and is it always about the money? It's always going to be about the money for some people, yeah, but not everyone. If people that are in this medical community to actually help uh, people, it's not always about the money. It isn't always about the money. And some of these doctors do have a thousand patients. Yeah, you know, they do have a thousand right. patients, depending on the specialty. So you know, it's 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 a it's a broad topic. It's I, I'm on board with it. I am. You've been listening to Planet Vera Radio. Please stay tuned. 